All right, all right. So, joining us right now on the Midday Mess is someone that I like to call a mentor, someone that is a professor. Um, Paris, what do you think? What, what else do we like to call this person that's, that's joining us right now? She's amazing. One of the greatest um, professors I've, ever, I've had in this college, definitely. Yes. Um, Somebody to look up to. If you ever just need help, it, this is someone that you can go to. Um, the Midday Mess really wants to welcome Professor Nadine Barnett Cosby to the Midday Mess. Welcome, welcome, welcome. welcome. How are you doing today, Professor? I'm doing great. What a great welcome. <laughs> Caitlin, can you hear us out there? Yeah, I can. Hey, okay, perfect. All right. So, by the way, yes, we had to kick Caitlin out the studio because we have Professor she Cosby coming like into the studio. You know what I mean? Aww. You had to say that like that, Roberto. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, Professor Cosby, you feeling good today? I'm feeling great. We're happy to have we're you here today. Well, I'm very yeah. happy to be there. I'm actually flattered that you guys invited me, so thank you. <laughs> so, Professor Cosby, um, she teaches mass communications here at Iona College. So, we want to know... What, how did you get into that? How did you get into mass communications? Um, well, I always knew that I wanted to be in mass communications. Uh, I don't think I was exactly sure where. Uh, initially, I thought I wanted to be a news reporter. So I kind of pursued that path in internships, and it was very early on in my internships that I realized that I wasn't really interested in reporting the news. Mm. I um, was really kind of distracted by the production stuff going on around. Uh, and I fell in love with that, so I started to focus on production. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you started to focus on production. How did you get into production? Uh, you know, additional internships just for experience, and then eventually I think my first production job was in live event production. Um, work radio kind of at the same time I think I was working both jobs so I was you know working in radio and doing radio production and then also um, working at Madison Square Garden producing live events uh, mostly sports games basketball and hockey wow so your, your resume cool. extends far it does I've been around for a minute <laughs> <laughs> so um, do you have any advice for uh, any college students because we are yeah. a college radio station um how would you how would you what would you say to a college student that's trying to really break into the industry now at this at this age sure at, at this moment in, you know sure um there's a lot that i would say i always tell my students first of all keep an open mind just like i was sure i wanted to be a reporter and then mm -hmm. through having an open mind realized that there was something i found more interesting it's important for students to keep an open mind and not be so locked into one particular role because they haven't receive the exposure yet to really make a decision on what exactly they want to do. Um, so that's one thing. And the second thing I'd say is whatever they decide that they want to do, start doing it now. Like work on whatever your craft is going to be, right? Like you guys are on the radio now. You guys have a head start if you want to work in radio professionally. Um, for my students that want to be involved in film or television, you have the means, you have the ability to start shooting stuff now. So my uh, first piece of advice is to get a jump start on whatever it is you want to do. Start working on it now. There's no reason why you can't. So you, you, would, you would agree that um, despite our age, you, we still have a lot of time to decide exactly what we want to do and how, how to go about it. We can change and everything like that. Absolutely. I think that you have a lot of time to decide on one thing, okay. if that's ever the case. I don't know if I've even really decided on one thing. I'm still doing a lot of different things. So I believe that's okay. I'm not from the school of you need to pick this one job or this one role and stick stick to it until you retire, right? It doesn't really right. work that way anymore. So you have a lot of time to try different things. But at the same time, I don't think you have a lot of time in terms of getting experience. Because the goal is you want to have a great college experience and get a great education, but you want to get a job when you graduate, Definitely. right? That's right. the number one goal. That's something yes. that I'm learning now because I'm, I'm a applying to inter internships now and I feel mm -hmm. like I've kind of started late in, in terms of the application for internships right I that's some I've, I've needed to really I should have started that maybe a year before and right, to add yeah. On, yeah to add on to Roberto said like sort of that that lateness sort of um pushes me to say you know um it's kind of too late like I, I'm afraid that I've already like uh, wasted too much time do you think that 
Like it's not, it's, I should not think like that. Like I should just like pursue what I need to pursue. Yeah. You definitely shouldn't think that way because it's not too late. It feels like there's a lot of pressure because you have a deadline, right? Yes. You have a graduation yes. date in mind. Yes. Um, but don't get so pressured that you feel like you haven't done what you needed to do to prepare and now it's too late. There's always time. You could start right now today preparing to get that job after graduating. And it's all the same stuff, right? So yeah. maybe you don't have three years to do internships, but you have a year. That's still a year that you can get some really good experience okay. on your resume. So don't feel so pressured that you think it's too late. You definitely have time to jump in. Thank you very much. Sure. So now that we've we've spoken to Professor Cosby about what she's what she's done, let's get into Empire. Let's <laughs> let's get into some television talk. So I'm sure you've been watching it, right, Professor Cosby? Absolutely. What do you think about it so far? Well, right now you guys are putting me on blast because I'm sharing my guilty pleasure with everyone that's <laughs> listening. <laughs> but that's that's my show. Is it? Yeah. Oh. As far as I'm concerned, that might be one of the best shows on television. But, you know, I look at things in terms of writing and mm -hmm. character development. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so glad you went there because <laughs> I, I read, that's what I want to get into. What do, you, what do you think about the writing of the show? Excellent writing. Excellent writing. Okay. I know that, um, you know, some of it could be considered offensive, and I'm sure we're going to talk about that. But the reality is the characters are fully developed. The plot is expansive. We're looking at lots of different characters, lots of different lives and storylines mm -hmm. that are affected, and they all affect each other as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm a big fan of the writing. The, the plot of the show has been receiving a little bit of backlash. And this, is, this goes, um, hold on. Um, be the plot because the beginning of the show it started off with um, a homophobic father. He's he's a rapper and he's trying to really break into the 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 industry, and so we have his his wife who starts. They're trying to basically get some startup money, so they start dealing drugs. Um, they get caught and the wife takes the fall. This is we're talking about Cookie here, and um, the, um, what do you think about the backlash on the plot? You know. For me, it's 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 unfounded. I don't have a problem with the plot itself. Right. I don't have a problem with that backstory. Um, it's just that. It's backstory that explains how we've arrived at the present, right? right? Mm -hmm. With these complex relationships between characters. Now... There, there could have been a hundred different backstories that allowed us to arrive at the same place or a similar place, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe... Um, not as nuanced to fit these particular characters and the way they interact with each other now. Right. I don't have a problem with that. Was it a negative backstory? Yes. Right. Is that a reality for a lot of people in business and a lot of families? Absolutely. Yeah. So, when, so wouldn't you, I'm sorry, wouldn't you agree that um, it's okay to push the boundaries of um, real, real life versus like, uh, you know, the normal TV? So you, would you feel like we're going to get to the point where this all these topics and things won't be um controversial like like they'll be the norm do you feel like that future I think we should and I would love to see it happen I don't know if I believe we'll get to that point you know I mm. feel like it's um it's interesting because you know you guys are too young to really understand the the reference to the show like dynasty I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, it nope. but I'm right it's a, it's it goes way back but the point is there used to be a time of these nighttime dramas right okay. yeah. and they involve families that were you know impacted by the fact that many of them were criminals many of them were very cutthroat and did whatever they could do to either get the family business or take over other businesses to to me, Empire is a throwback to that storyline. So the controversy regarding kind of the negative backstory or the negative behavior of a lot of these um, family members really stems from all of this pressure put on them. It's a show with a predominantly, almost entirely African-American right. cast, mm -hmm. and there's all this pressure to... Um, I guess, give the perfect representation of African-Americans. Unfortunately, shows uh, like Empire typically have that undue pressure put up on them. And especially because it's one of the few shows that has, right. uh, on network television, right. that has a predominantly Amer African-American cast. Right. And now we're going to get into more backlash that <laughs> it's been receiving. And this is one, um, I read online an article, this is an, an, an editorial piece, um, that the show has been per perpetuating um, colorism. Right. What, what are your thoughts on that? 
I read that article as well. I think it's pretty ridiculous. You think it's ridiculous? I, I do. I agree. I just wanted yeah. to make sure we were on the same page. But yeah. okay, continue. Mm-hmm. I, I just think we have to get to the point where we're not reaching to find something so negative about a show. If you look at the cast of the show, like, and not, you know, look at publicity photos that have been photoshopped and lightened or whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. But if you just look at the cast, very diverse. Mm-hmm. Even within it having an African American cast, they're all different shades and sizes and backgrounds mm-hmm. playing different characters. If we're going to get past that itself being a big deal, we certainly have to start with not nitpicking between the different shades of black right. that yeah, are represented yeah, yeah, on the show. Thank you. It's pretty Definitely. silly. And not only that, it's just they're a family, and if it, it right. goes, it goes. It's it's something as simple as casting, right? Where the the family needs to look alike. So, right. if you're gonna have one light skinned person in a family, I right. think that the rest of them should kind of be light skinned, right? Absolutely, <laughs> and there needs to be some chemistry, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, and and they just work well together, and they're all different shades. I don't look at it as a completely light skinned cast, right? So um, that. so. What do you think about um, <laughs> Cookie's character? <laughs> what do you think about the you know the one the lady who famously? Well, I don't think I don't think she well she she's the one that coined the, t- the, the term boo boo kitty right right yes right. what do you think about her? I love Cookie's character for lots of reasons. I mean, the reality is that you know Cookie is a mother. Cookie is someone that really gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect her family and. You know, in the process of doing that, she kind of got left behind. So now she's here, you know, and has a second chance. She's trying to take advantage of that and rightfully kind of reclaim part of a company that she was the force behind. And it was really her ideas and her willpower that built the company. So um, in that, I love Cookie. I also love Cookie and her attitude because I think that, you know, we all have these different personalities within all of us and we have to be professional in certain environments and, and, you know, we're family people in other environments. And then sometimes we're Cookie if, you know, (laughs) given the right circumstances. So I have no problem with it. I think she... um, she just brings a lot of excitement and a lot of depth to the show. I completely agree with you. I, I love Cookie. I, <laughs> I just love every time she's every time she's put up against certain certain characters on the show. She she delivers. Right. Those lines were written for nobody but Taraji P Henson. Absolutely, <laughs> I agree. She brings it every time, and you know she's a fighter. And I feel like the majority of women are fighters, right? And have been in different situations where, you know, we feel cornered or we feel like we really have to go after something in order to get it. So she takes her way of doing it and people have other ways, but Mm -hmm. it's just nice to see how she comes out swinging to get whatever she needs to get done for her family. Right. There is one problem that I do have with the show. And I think since we are in 2015, I'm I'm not sure I agree with the, the, the storyline that they have with um the stereotypical homophobia that that they have on the show. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? The whole Jamal right, yeah. right. Um, I think that's going to be a generational thing, right? Because I completely understand why you say you have a problem with that. Right. Um, I just feel like it's outdated. Like, why right, are we, why, why right. are we still talking about this? I can completely understand that. I think for me, looking at it as someone from a different generation, I see the reality of that that how much it still exists especially if you're looking at you know families and if you're looking at fathers and how they view their sons Mm -hmm. so you know you guys have come up in a period where we now have acceptance right which is so important but people from earlier generations aren't quite there yet so i understand that while you know in the show his brothers are supportive of him and you know it's not even an issue like he came out and he was praised for it which was a beautiful thing but the reality is many times um that that happens the parents aren't as receptive again especially if you're talking about black fathers and their sons yeah i would agree like that's that goes back in the 70s when um you know, you had African American uh, racism as well. Um, Archie Bunker, Good Times, right. and all that. Those were examples of that. So that's sort of how this issue ties in in the current age, 2015. That's right. what we're trying to get past right now. So that's going to be shown on television. 
Absolutely. For us to like see, you know. Absolutely. I think the negative part of it is the reality that is being addressed. Using, you know, Paris's example, just like how, you know, we we'd love to think we're well past racism. Now most of us that are progressive feel like we're in such a better place, but there are a lot of old school, older generations that um, you know, don't appreciate the diversity in the world. So I think it's kind of the same thing happening there. Now, um, getting off of Empire, are there any other television shows that you're watching? Um, yeah, I think right now everything that I'm watching is on DVR because I never get to sit and watch it live. Um, you're, you're an extremely busy person. <laughs> <laughs> I am, but I do have some shows that I love. I think you guys know that I'm a big fan of Scandal. Oh, yes. Uh, I so Scandal. I still love the show. I'm several episodes behind, so can't talk about it today, but big fan of the show. <laughs> don't worry, I don't watch it, so it's okay. It's okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Same thing with How to Get Away with Murder. Um, geez, as I start listing shows, I'm worried that I start to sound a little bit cliche. I was going to say Power is coming back. That's a Showtime show. It's coming back for a second season. Really excellent show. Um, and then I have a whole different category of shows that I love. I'm looking forward to, um, there's a new series coming on called, I think it's called The Bible A.D., I've heard of and I watched the Bible, mm-hmm. and I was completely captivated by that. The production, the story, everything. It's one of those shows that it was interesting to me. It was interesting to my teenage son. It was interesting to my younger son. Yeah. It captured everyone in terms of audience. So now there's kind of a sequel to that coming up, uh, I think, this Sunday. So I'm looking forward to that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, have you heard about Netflix's new show, Bloodline? Have you? I've heard of it, but I haven't really paid a lot of attention to the details of it. All right, because I, I just finished um, binge watching it over the weekend. Really? Yeah, oh. it was interesting. It was it was pretty good. It was okay. a little got a, a little slow start, but mm-hmm. it was the last four episodes of that show worth watching. Really? It's, it's worth the wait. <laughs> Maybe that's going to be my yeah, summer yeah. viewing. It's a good show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, so now let's let's get into the Oscars. Yes. Oh, okay. I also know you're a movie buff, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I know you're also direct. Which you didn't you didn't mention that at the beginning of when I asked you. You didn't right. I I didn't direct that. I didn't mention that. I didn't want to you know start listing because it would end up being a laundry list. But <laughs> I kind of alluded to it when I said I still haven't picked one thing because I love a lot of aspects of media. Yes. So the Oscars. Um, the Oscars. Um, they were called the whitest Oscars since 1998. That's right. that's pretty insane to me, especially in 2015. Why are we still facing this problem of a lack of diversity d- now yeah. in this era? Wow, that's a that's a really good question. It's a tough question. Right. Um, I'm not sure why, but I think some things that I've observed using the Oscars specifically as as an example. I think that when uh, films have predominantly black casts or the storylines really involve black characters, um, they're kind of put into this category, right? They right. become yeah. black films. Yeah. Right, yes. I'm not sure type, why sort of or what that even costume. means, right? Yeah. So I believe that has a lot to do with it, and it's unfortunate because... You know, a great story is a great story. So you can have a film about family or crime or, you know, any aspect of life. And if it's a predominantly white cast, it's it's just a movie, right? It's not called a white movie. Right. But right. the same isn't true for films that feature black actors in lead roles. Do you think that happened to Selma? I do. I think a couple of things happened to Selma. Like what? Uh, one is that, yeah, so it fell under that, you know, that black movie or black film category um and it was a film that had just amazing acting and directing Directing. you know writing as well right Mm -hmm. triple threat but it fell into that category and i also think that selma was largely looked at as something a little bit too deep and too intense um for i guess mainstream audiences to really appreciate it as entertainment in terms of the writing, acting, and directing. So we're in the middle of these major social justice issues playing out in real life. So I think for Selma, the timing was just kind of maybe too close to home for some people. Okay, so you thought and it for was like others, a, yeah, probably kinda, a response to what's going right. on. Used I as think a response so. to what the things that have been going on in the world. Yeah, I think so. 
So you're saying that the academy didn't want to feel like they were playing uh, playing into right, it, right? Playing yeah. into the, the times. Absolutely, yeah. I felt like because of what was going on concurrently with Selma the movie, and then with real life, the academy decided to retreat from appearing to take any kind of political stance. Hmm. Um, do you think that there was a lack of formidable diverse choices this year? Um, yeah, I, I think there was. I think there is every year, really. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, n- not, not in the nominees. I'm talking about movies for them to nominate for, you know, in, in general, in movies this year. Do you think there was a lack of formidable um, yeah. diverse movies? Oh, yeah, definitely. I would say so. And I also think that, um, you know, it's interesting because, again, when we say diverse movies, we go back to looking for movies that have, you know, predominantly black cast right. and then considering yeah. the story and, and whether or not it's worthy of a nomination. I would love to see movies that represent the real world and have diversity within that one movie itself right. so that maybe a black actor is nominated because he played the lead role in a movie that was just about a story that right. involved multiple mm-hmm. you know, different mm-hmm. races. When I talk about diversity, I'm talking about everybody because Right. I'm I'm not even black. I'm actually Puerto Rican, so it's right. like mm-hmm. I'm talking about everybody. Yeah. yeah, every culture needs to be represented. I mean, uh, it needs to be a movie that has like you know the whole facts of life. Like you have like, like a college movie, like a whole bunch right. of different diversities, not just like one, like not just white nor black. I feel like we need to start making movies geared toward like real life, like you said. Absolutely. It's so important. And I think what happens when we discuss, you know, because the term diversity is now this, you know, hot term to use. And what happens is we start to get these little um, checklists, right? So if, you know, the Academy and not to pinpoint them, but any organization really says, well, we need diversity. We need to work on that. There's this checklist. And then it's like, okay, we have a woman. So we have diversity. We have a Latino, so we have diversity. And everyone becomes lumped into this one category of diverse, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And that doesn't work either. That's not a realistic way to Mm -hmm. view things. So I think first we need to clearly define or figure out for ourselves what diversity means and looks like. It should look like the real world. The real world, exactly. It shouldn't even have that term at all. Right. Like it should just be like lines of blurred. Right. Man, Professor Cosby is dropping gems today. <laughs> I'm feeling it. <laughs> I'm feeling it. So, um, as we all know, the winner for Best Director and uh, Best Film was um, Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu, who was he directed the film Birdman. Did right. you get a chance to watch Birdman? I did. All right. So, did you feel did you feel that this was the Academy's way of making up for the lack of diversity in the nominees, or did Birdman actually deserve the awards? Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> That you snuck that second question in there. Now I have to answer it. Um, starting with the first question, I'll say I didn't feel that way at first. I, you know, I didn't read into them nominating him at all. But as soon as he kind of became, you know, his his nomination seemed to have become the poster child for the Academy. You know, in their response, you know look, we're, we're not racist or we are being diverse. We right. have this, you know, Latino director that's been nominated and he won. Um, it was almost too prepared, right? right, And too yeah. perfect a response. So I felt like maybe it did have something to do with it. And then, of course, even, you know, that ridiculous joke that I, was, I, I guess, meant to be a joke, but to request offensive. his green card, that was extremely Oh, yeah, I, I, I really thought that was offensive, yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. Extremely. I thought that was crazy. Yeah. So, um, you know, in that light, I do think that maybe his background had something to do with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I can't say for sure, because the Academy also likes weird films, mm-hmm. and Birdman was really strange. In the way that it was filmed. Mm-hmm. In the way that mm-hmm. it was filmed, and that has a lot to do with directing. And looking at it, just just the artistic value of it, I mean, he did a, an amazing job directing mm-hmm. that story, right? It it has a look and feel like no other film, which are things that do stand out to the Academy. Right. All right, I, I enjoyed Bird. I enjoyed Birdman a lot. I enjoyed the way he filmed it. I, that that took a lot of editing. That because I'm yes. I'm sure it wasn't filmed in one take as right. they made it look. 
Right. So I'm sure editing was a Absolutely. Lot. Yeah. I think it was a, an amazing job in directing, editing, definitely cinematography. Um, I wasn't a fan of the story, so I don't know that I'm a fan of the writing. Mm. But aesthetically, it was beautiful. What, wait, what didn't you like about the story? Um, I don't know. I just, uh, I didn't really get into it. Like, I didn't get that connection with the characters that I look for, you know, in, in the mark of a good film for okay. me. Mm, all right. Yeah. Well, Professor Cosby, we want to thank you for stopping by the Midday Mess. Thank you so much for coming out. happy to be here. This was so much fun. It was. It's we really fun having you. It. it was really fun having <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And don't let it be the last time, please. Definitely. Don't be a stranger. As long as you keep don't inviting me, I'll keep coming. Thank you so much. <laughs> Always welcome. Thanks, guys. This is the Midday Mess on WICR. We'll be right back.